Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. My name is Paige. I've been working in music for about seven or eight years now. Um, I've been working in marketing, both digital and frontline marketing, social media. I'm an artist manager. I'm a music writer slash blogger. I've pretty much done as many things as I possibly could. And the thing I'm most passionate about is trying to help other people get into this industry as well, because I know it's daunting and it's very gatekeepy, so it can be really hard to find the information you're looking for. So today, I wanna to talk to you about what skills you already have that would make you a good fit in the music industry. There are so many things that are already on your resume, even if they're not music focused, that would make you a good fit for different jobs. I often have people asking me, what should I go to school for? Or what would I be good at? So that's what I wanna focus on today. If you find this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'm gonna be posting these every week going forward. And if you would rather read this than listen to it, there is a written copy on my website. I'm gonna be posting a ton of stuff there as well. So if you wanna make sure you're always in the loop on all of it, you can sign up for my email list so that you always get it sent straight to your inbox. Let's get into it. There are some skills that will be helpful no matter where you reside in the industry. I think the main thing is not having a fear of rejection because it's going to happen a lot. It's going to happen more than you're going to find successes here, unfortunately. But there's just a lot of competition and a lot of saturation. So unfortunately, there are a lot of people going for the same opportunities as you, whether it's as somebody applying for jobs, whether you're trying to send out emails for a band you manage and you're not getting any responses, whether you're a band applying to play shows and festivals or for different opportunities and not getting them. There's just a lot of different factors that can affect that, whether it's somebody else that's better connected or just different preferences these things happen and you just kind of have to get used to it unfortunately but if you can do that and you can stick it out long enough the opportunities will start to come if the music is strong another important set of skills to have is being highly motivated and being really self-disciplined and keeping yourself on track and having good time management skills a lot of people that work in music have multiple jobs whether it's different jobs within the industry whether it's having things you do in the industry and then having a day job to actually make you money. There's a lot of different ways people make it work for themselves, but uh, it does it does involve a lot of balancing and trying to make sure that nothing slips while you're trying to do everything. So that's just, I guess, something important to keep in mind is being able to make sure you can do everything you need to do in order to do the things you're passionate about. So into some more specialized skills. If you are really strong at writing, whether it's creative writing, copywriting, whatever it may be, you could have a future in publicity. You have to craft these press releases that people read, they get all the information that they need, but they also get brought in and want to support the artist and want to learn more. So if you're strong in that sense, publicity could be a great fit for you. Another great fit for you could just be music writing, whether it's for a different outlet, whether you start your own website, there's a lot of opportunities there online. Not all of them are paid, but it could lead to something in the future if people read your writing and enjoy it. That's what happened for me. I had my own website. I was writing about bands I liked and different theories I had about their concept albums. And somebody at Billboard reached out to me and asked me to write for them. It was literally just based off of me writing on my website for zero dollars. And I ended up getting a pretty sick freelance gig for a long time. <laughs> I guess that's another thing to keep in mind too, is that even if a gig is not making you money right now, it could lead you to something better. And that's really frustrating because not all of us have the time to do things for free while we wait. It's a problem I have with industry internships that don't pay, a little bit classist. However, if you do have the time or if it's something that you wanna do in your spare time, you never know where it could lead. It could be something great. If you are highly organized, like I mean lists, post-it notes, I use a sauna just to organize my day. Like if you are organized to a T, there are a lot of spots in the industry that could really benefit from having you around. One of them again is publicity because you're reaching out to a ton of different websites and different outlets to get coverage for your artists. And you need to keep track of who you've already contacted, what you contacted them about, when, if they responded. It's a lot to keep organized, so if you aren't an organized person, that's going to get out of control real quick. Trust me, as somebody who gets those requests and is not very organized in that way, <laughs> I find it difficult 
So if it's something that you thrive in, that could be a lot easier for you than it is for me. Another job this could be a good fit for is marketing because at record labels, if you are the marketing manager for a project, you are kind of the hub for everything. You reach out to the publicist to see what they're up to. You reach out to sales to see what they're up to. You get the request from A&R to say, oh, this is how we have to do this and this. These are the requests from the artists. You, you are kind of the person that gets the updates from everybody. If you are a label that isn't the domestic label for the artist, you're gonna be the one getting contacted from their domestic signing label, telling them, oh, this is what we're doing here, you have to follow our lead. Or if you're the domestic label, the international labels are gonna be reaching out to you to figure out what they should be doing because they're following your lead. It's a lot of people to stay on top of and make sure everybody's on the same page. You're reaching out to make sure that all of the albums are linked in the back end so that when it goes up on release day on SoundScan and on the billboard charts, no copies of the album are missing from those numbers because it could be the difference between going number one and not charting if something's missing. Did I just stress you out? If I didn't, maybe marketing is for you. <laughs> Another role that really benefits from being organized is being an artist manager, which I can attest to myself. I've been told since being in school that being an artist manager is like being a glorified babysitter and it is 100% true. Um, the artists are amazing at creating music, creating a whole visual around it, just creating what they see in their minds and bringing it to life. But sometimes it helps to have a manager that can look at everything else that needs to get done behind the scenes. And instead of making it the artist problem, they get done whatever they can do and then delegate it out to everybody else. And it's good to have somebody who's able to manage all of those things at once without getting too overwhelmed so that the artist can focus on the part that they are good at that you can't help with. Also, I just want to give a quick shout out to Brit Paper Scissors who made this shirt. Um, they have a ton of really cool merch and photo prints up right now and some of them are going towards Black Lives Matter charities. Just want to give them a shout out because I've been wearing this shirt all the quarantine and really loving it. Um, if you want to support a local independent creator, Brit Paper Scissors, I'm gonna leave this link below. Anyways, sorry, back to it. If you have strong people skills, if you can talk to a total stranger and make them feel like they've known you their entire life, if you can meet people with totally different personality types from your own and feel comfortable working together and not clash, if, if you don't mind having a lot of downtime and sitting in a room doing nothing for hours on end, <laughs> live music might be for you. Um, these jobs involve spending a lot of time in close quarters with the same people, whether it's in a venue all working together or whether it's on the road for months at a time. These jobs involve having personality types where you can work with other people and not make things difficult by all clashing and not being able to work together easily. That could make or break a tour. It could really turn a tour from like a good time traveling with friends to an absolute nightmare that you can't wait to get home from. Um, so those could be good jobs for you, whether it's booking shows, whether it's being a promoter, whether it's merch management, front of house, audio engineering, any of these things that keep you in this room, social skills are probably pretty important. Um, I know when I worked in marketing, it was a desk job. I didn't really have to talk to that many people. Um, it's a totally different game when you're working in live music, totally different. If you have any sort of digital or creative skills, you can kind of find a place anywhere doing anything. <laughs> there are so many ways that this could be helpful. Um, I personally started my internet career customizing my Neopets page, and that is how I learned how to use HTML. I know a lot of people who learned it from MySpace and creating MySpace pages back in the day and then got into web design. It's it's kind of insane how our generation was just crafted for this, but whether you're good at designing merch or logos or music video design or photography, like there's so many places for you in this industry. I think I'll have to turn that one into like more of its own video because we'll be here all day. There are so many jobs for creative types in this industry. We'll come back to that one. Hold me to that. If you've ever worked in retail, first of all, I am so sorry for the way people treat you, specifically around the holidays. It is not fair, <laughs> but perhaps it can come in useful with working in the music industry, whether it is as a merch manager at shows. I feel like oftentimes bands just hire a friend to sit at the table or just get them to do it for free. 
and it does not have the same effect as having somebody who actually knows how to sell things and how to uh, count money. That's also important, being able to give the right amount of change. Very embarrassing how often that does not happen the way it should, <laughs> but you could be the solution. Also, there's a whole department at record labels called D2C, which is direct to consumer, and they handle all sorts of merch, whether it's setting up online stores or actually figuring out what merch to make or how much, that could be something that's great for you as well. Then for those that have a great ear for music, I know everybody wants to be an A&R. I've always wanted to get into it as well, but it's something that can't be taught. It's just kind of something you have to prove. Nobody can teach you how to know what songs are good. You just kind of do, you know? That's one of those skills that nobody, no, no amount of training can get you there. You just have to be the right person for the job essentially. But there are ways to prove it before you get to a point where you could be hired as an A&R. Um, I found it helpful to have my own website where I share music that I'm listening to so I can say, hey, you guys signed this artist, but I was actually listening to them two years ago, so I was a little bit ahead. It's kind of pretentious and it's kind of annoying to be like, I was listening to them before you. But if it can prove that you were ahead of the curve and that you knew what was going to be popping before it was popping, it could help you get a job. You could also just use that skill to be an artist manager and assign bands before they hit that point. If you can find artists that you know are gonna be huge and work with them and foster their skills to get to the point where they can get signed, that's amazing too. And that is totally a skill that you can use to build your own career within the industry. So those are just a few of the skills you might already have on your resume that would make you a great fit in the music industry. I know we kind of treat it like this industry is on this pedestal and it's mysterious and unattainable, but it's really not. It's just an industry like any other. It's just got some cool perks, but it's still just a job. So you can absolutely find your way in, you can get your foot in the door, and I would like to help you wedge that foot in the door. <laughs> so if you have any questions about some of your skills or where you would fit in the industry, be sure to leave your questions below and I will respond to all of them. Or if you feel more comfortable messaging me privately, you can DM me uh, pretty much anywhere. I'm page backstage on like every website, <laughs> so you should be able to find me. Links will be below. Um, and if you would rather have a written version of this to reference back to in the future, you can find it on my website. And I am excited to share more of these videos with you, so be sure to check back next week. I'll see you soon. Bye.